Hello everyone, welcome to the fourth video um, of our groundwork exercises that you can do at home um, video uh, and this is going to be the fourth explanation video. So this is going to explain our new movements for day four uh, and this is going to be the final day of this particular series that we're going to do and next week we'll move on to other different exercises that you can do at home. Um, but the set of movements that we're going to cover in this final part um, are mostly auxiliary and supporting movements. Uh, they each have key roles in various techniques. Uh, you'll recognise how they relate specifically to uh, particularly significant or important techniques. Uh, and what it does is it, it complements all of the other actions that we have thus far encountered. Uh, you will recognise some of the movements we're about to do. Uh, because we've done some of them as part of warm-ups etc in uh, some of our other workout videos so as always this video will have one final workout sort of our ground exercises that you can do that puts everything that we've done together so that you can uh, both drill these movements and practice uh, in terms of a full routine so check out the link to that in the description below so without further ado let's get started with a movement that we have covered initially as a simple uh, warm-up exercise which is leg triangle so uh, I just want to stress that there are two types of leg triangle actions that we can seek to do and the one we've done so far is about allowing us to stand up which is a, an action we're going to talk about in a second so what we've done is we've come up we've taken our right foot behind our knee and we've fallen forward into this so what this action represents as I come up and swap is the beginnings of leg triangle but because I'm keeping one of my legs straight, obviously that isn't what I would do in a normal triangle. That is what I would do if I'm allowing the momentum of my legs to carry me forward, to allow me to stand and then come back down and allow me to, to get up quickly in that fashion. So what's the difference if I'm just practicing it as a triangle? Well, primarily, because a triangle is... Um, a form of strangulation around your opponent's head, uh, uh, neck and a single arm in most cases, um, I need to make the circumference of the area that I am actually strangling with them as small as possible. And so that's what you just need to seek to do with your triangle. This is quite easy to do uh, because you can physically put your arm inside the gap that is created by your triangle and very quickly work out the movements that are going to reduce the circumference of this. So I can obviously bring that leg down, bring my knees in, and both of those things are gonna make it bigger. If I elevate this leg and take my legs away, the area here becomes very, very quickly quite large. So um, in terms of a, a difference, rather than our leg coming up and just falling in this action, when we do this as part of our drill, and we're doing it as specifically as a triangle, instead of coming down in this action, we come down and we want to keep our knees unified so that they're working in the same direction so my legs aren't like this now as I come in and I'm closing this gap as much as possible so I've brought my heels in I've brought my knees up and I've closed everything in tight as opposed to if I do this and you can see now the the area here is absolutely huge so I'm gonna bring this down that closes the space in one direction I'm gonna bring my knees in and now I'm going to unify and that makes this gap as small as possible um, on where my arm is. So obviously if that was their neck, hopefully I would have a strangulation at this point. So obviously if we do a triangle, we've got to orientate ourselves, we've got to control our posture, we've got to do a myriad of other things. But just as an exercise, that is what we're looking for when we're doing this as an exercise on the ground. So we apply this from, unsurprisingly, a guard position. So as we're in a guard position, as we, if we say triangle, what we're gonna to seek to do is we're gonna to seek to elevate the hips up vertically. So as a precursor to this, I'm gonna create a frame with my arms and I'm gonna elevate the hips up vertical. So um, that's because quite often, as part of the entries of a triangle, requires us to elevate our hips and throw our foot into position. Obviously there's lots of ways to get into a triangle, but as part of the warm-up exercise, this is the way that we do it. So as we do that, we then secure the triangle at the top and come back down with our feet in this position. So as a single action, we start here, we come up, we come in, and then we come back down again, okay? Uh, if 
I said the triangle to command twice, then that means we do it again, but we swap. So as we come back, and we go just simply on the opposite side. So there's a nice simple exercise that we just incorporate. The triangle command is just that, it's the practice the action of elevating the hips, um, coming up onto our shoulders and securing our legs. So from this position one more time, we bring the hands down, we come up, we secure the leg, we bring everything in, we drop the hips and we come down in this position as opposed to what we did before when we were seeking to stand back up. So that's our triangle motion. Obviously a triangle is a type of technique that is, is most commonly, if you're in the, on your back, is being executed from your shoulders. So one of the next movements that again you will be familiar with is the action of almost doing a backward roll, which again we've done as a warm-up. So we call this uh, a right shoulder hold. Um, so we, rather than doing the right to the backward shoulder roll, um, we're going almost over and pausing. You'll recognise this action. So um, what this is to teach us to do is to get comfortable to be on our shoulders. So from this position, we turn that head. My, if I'm going with my right foot to my right corner, I look at where I want my foot to go, and we come over and we've planted the foot. So this is the position. From here, I've got to get comfortable controlling my weight and being on both sides. So we have left shoulder hold and right shoulder hold. I can pass between them like so, or more commonly what we'll do is, it, I'll put this into context, so for example we might go left shoulder, right shoulder, left shoulder hold, right shoulder, uh, back to guard, right shoulder hold. But equally, I could just pass from one side to the other, so I could go left shoulder hold, and then walk across to right shoulder, and then back to guard. And so it's just, in conjunction with the triangle action, it's just getting used to no longer just being, as we did in the initial set of exercises, all, all of the exercises with the exception of the guard position on the first day, were all in our body facing down. It's far more natural for us to to be in is far more what we're used to. Then as we've gone on, we then began to increase movements where I'm now in a supine position and I am doing techniques from a bottom position with my opponent on top of me. But this is taking that one step further of not only being <coughs> in a bottom position, but also being in an inverted position. Okay, so we have left shoulder hold, right shoulder hold, which are those actions of nearly doing our backward roll, but controlling our balance, controlling our hip position. We've also seen this in one of the transitional movements that we covered in day three. So to recap, we've seen that from here, we can do a reverse right leg over. So I'm gonna take my arm through, bring my shoulder down to the floor, and elevate up onto my hip, okay, from this position. And then we came up. This is tantamount to being in the right shoulder in the right shoulder hold position. We then elevated, controlled the hips, and then came back down at a 90 degree angle. The next movement we're going to add is standing up. Um, and so, as well as obviously acting on the floor, there are times when it's pertinent for us to stand. Well, we've already covered one of the main ways of doing this, which is from our initial movement, we go left foot out, and obviously that allows us to come up to a vertical posture, like in a knee on belly position, Utkipami, and then I can obviously seek to stand. But um, we also have what is a fundamental technical stand, which will be familiar to many of you. If you've never done this before, it's very, very simple. When I'm on my back and I want to stand, I have the problem that if my opponent's in front of me, I don't want to bring my head unnecessarily forward. So I've got to make sure that as I, I can stand without bringing my head towards my opponent. Simply doing this action all of the time is perfectly fine if I have space, but not perfectly fine if my opponent's there waiting to kick me in the head. So we need an alternative. <clears throat> so from a seated position, what we're going to do is take one hand and post it behind. Um, ideally, 
180 degrees. The downside, if I start to have an, and my arms starts to come out at an angle, if I carry that motion all the way here, if my opponent applies pressure, he's just gonna push me straight back down. So in an ideal position, if I am pushing my opponent away at the same time, having my arm 180 degrees behind me is gonna increase the effectiveness of that post. As I say, the more that I reduce that angle, the less effective it's gonna be if my opponent is forward. Obviously, if my opponent starts to circle, it's necessary that I use my feet and my hand and that I circle with them so that I maintain support in the direction that's immediately 180 degrees compared to where my opponent is. So as I do that, I make sure that my opposite leg, so if my right hand has come back, my left foot is drawn in close to my bum and it's flat to the floor. What that allows me to do is to have a base of support through two points. Okay, At the moment, my base of support is three points, my foot, my bum and my arm. Now, an important point I just need to stress here, a lot of the motions we've covered have always been on at least three points of support. If I have a tripod and I apply a force in any direction, obviously, depending on the magnitude of the force, if I increase it over a certain point, the tripod will still fall over. But if I increase, just apply a simple force in any direction, Unless I manage to shift the centre of mass of the tripod beyond one of those three legs, it won't fall over. Now, imagine instead that I have uh, a, a tripod and that is symmetrical with just two legs, um, so a bipod, or whatever you would call that. Um, if I apply a force forward or backward, even a little bit, if it's in a balanced position, if I apply even a tiny force, it will fall. So. In this moment, when my weight is on my uh, foot and my hand, and I'm here, I'm in a state of unstable equilibrium. I'm balanced right now, but if my opponent applies any force to me at this point, I am going to topple. And that's a reason why this arm position is so important. If my opponent applies a force to me along the line of my leg and my arm, so in this direction, so my opponent is there, and for example, I can kick towards the knee, I can hook the heel, I can kick a little higher if necessary, but be really careful of doing that because the higher I kick my legs, the more likely it is my opponent can grab my legs more easily, so it's much better to keep them into a low position. I would advocate from this position probably not aiming any higher than the knee because it's very easy for your opponent to start to grab your legs. So, but if he is in that position, because the line of my foot and my hand is straight relative to my opponent, if he applies a force or I kick or anything, I can push off this and I can be effective in that direction. But obvious, if my opponent was to apply a force here, I'm very, very quickly going to topple and I'm going to fall. So it's important that from this position, that once I create that elevation, I need to move very, very quickly. I don't want to stay there. And I want to make sure that if my opponent does move, that I reposition myself so that that line of support is always uh, along. I don't want to be in a position where my opponent is here and I go to stand up like this, this would be terrible. This would just simply not work. Any force on his part is going to knock me clean over. So we have post the hand, bring the foot in nice and tight to create a base of bridge of support, create hip elevation, and I'm going to bring my knee back to the inside of my wrist. Okay, you can see that gives me a short, small shift in action because the momentum on my leg allows me to carry me just a tiny bit. That brings my base of support underneath my body without compromising my spine. So I'm, I'm, my head is still pointing to the ceiling, which is important. What I don't want to do when I do this is the old man way of getting up. Apologies to all the old men out there. But um, I don't want to come one, two, and you know, it's inefficient and uh, not, not what we're looking for. So from this position, the hand comes in, we post, we elevate, we bring the knee back and I keep my head pointing to the ceiling. I now have a triangle of support with my feet. So uh, I've got my knee, my two feet. So again, if my opponent comes in at this point, I have enough support and enough base, base of support in order to apply a force back. From there, I can stand up vertically. Notice my back foot is on the, my ball of my feet. It's not flat. From here, pushing up is, is no good. Also, it's possible for me to do throws and things from this position, and I can't do that if I can't effectively push the floor. So I need to make sure this foot is anchored, not like this, but like so. So I've got my triangle, my base of support, and then I can stand back up, I've got my guard, and then I can carry on with whatever I need to do, whether that's run or turn and fight. So, one more time, as a technical stand, 
So one, two, three, four, and then stand. One more time. So from here, so one, two, three, and then back. And obviously you can do that the other side. So those additional supplementary movements, we have the triangle, we have the uh, right and left shoulder hold positions, and we also have the uh, technical stand, all of which can be incorporated with all the other techniques just to create a greater sense of thinking about how we position, we'll get to a certain point, apply a certain technique, and become comfortable with particularly those inverted positions and the transition between standing and ground. There are obviously other movements that we could take, but those are the main ones that we would incorporate for the vast majority of the class the vast majority of the time. So don't forget to check out the workout that follows this, which drills each of those motions and allows you to practice them a little bit more and then puts them into the context of the full routine. If you like this video guys, please don't forget to like it. Make sure that during this time of tr trouble and turmoil that you look after yourselves, don't forget to wash your hands, stay at home, stay safe.